I mean, let's be honest. Putting down a civil war, conquering a foreign nation, leaves a hell of a lot of a mess that you gotta clean up. Hello everybody and welcome to another light novel review. I am Justice R. Stone and on this channel I cover all things light novels. I do reviews like this one, news, as well as countdowns of the most popular light novels in Japan. And I post the light novel podcast on this channel as well. So if you love light novels or you're just getting into them, you should consider subscribing. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing volume number three of How a Realist Hero Rebuilt the Kingdom. This one by Doji Omaru. It is released in English by J Novel Club. Uh, this one actually is pretty much quoted to always be one of J Novel Club's best selling titles. And if you've been really waiting for a physical release of this series, you're going to get it in September. They're finally going to be releasing this via Seven Seas. They're going to start putting this one out in physical copies. So that is something to look forward to. If you want to pick up your own copies of How a Realist Hero Rebuilt the Kingdom, I'll have links in the description down below to Amazon. Now I'm going to say this right up front. I'm coming back to this series after taking a long hiatus from it. And that really has nothing to do with the series. I actually really enjoyed the first two volumes of this series. It's just one of those things where when you start really trying to review every brand new number one that comes out and, well, you know, there's just so many shiny things that kind of distract you after a while. But if you follow the Light Novel Podcast, this is going to be the series we talk about next. So I had to get caught up on volumes three and four for that podcast, which we're recording later this week. So that's why I'm coming back to a realist hero. Uh, in fact, well, and I mean, honestly, it was good for me because I kept saying that I wanted to read more of it. And volume four is kind of the end of the first arc. So it was kind of a good place to catch up to. Now, this specific volume is, of course, dealing with the aftermath of volume number two. Now, there's going to be spoilers for volume number two. I can't help it. There's absolutely zero way to talk about this book without spoiling some of volume number two, which involved a civil war that Soma had to deal with, and then also involved an invasion from another kingdom and that Soma had to put down as well. Now, this book is really all about the cleanup, because, I mean, let's face it, you've got people who betrayed you that you've got to deal with, you've got the foreign country that you've now basically occupied their capital that you've got to deal with, and just to really complicate things, you've got the Empire, the Grand Chaos Empire, who is the largest and most powerful nation in this world that we have, and... <laughs> Well, it, it, it's getting involved because Amadonia, which is the country that invaded and then got their butts handed to them, they are signatories on the Declaration of for Mankind, or the Mankind Declaration, I guess it's called, uh, which basically is a group of countries that signed this document that basically said that no change in borders would be allowed to happen through violence. And... Now, the kingdom of al Friyaden, which is Soma's kingdom, they did not sign the document. And so it's created kind of a quagmire because al Friyaden has basically kind of lawfully taken over this property. I mean, they were attacked first, but because Amadonia is the signatory, they are technically more of an ally to the empire than al Friyaden is. And so it creates a problem. And there's no way that Soma is going to be able to take on the Empire. And so we have sort of the beginning of this book very much about the negotiations of just what is going to happen with the city of Vaughn, which Soma has seized in this military action. And then the sort of tail end of the book, about the last, mm, I'd say, third of the book, focuses very heavily on the dealing with the traitors that were involved in the Civil War. Now, even though it's been a long time since I've read Volume 2, I know instinctively that this volume is a little bit of a... Hmm... It's still a really good book. I don't want you thinking that I don't think it's good. I really do. In fact, you know, the one thing that I have really liked about this series is the way that Soma 
manipulates things, the way that he is planning ahead, the way that he creates all of these different contingency plans based on what may or may not happen, the way that he messes with his opponents psychologically, which, like, it's, oh man, I, you know what, there's a lot of stuff that happens in the beginning of the book, ways that Soma basically plants the seeds of unrest amongst believe it or not, the people that he's conquered. <laughs> you would think by occupying this city that it would be nothing but violence and hatred towards Soma, but he's a clever dude and, uh, yeah, starts sowing seeds to make things really uncomfortable for the kingdom of Amadonia if they take this city back. So it's fun to watch kind of that manipulation level, and I've really enjoyed that. And, of course, this book gets into more diplomacy because... Where the first, you know, where volume number one was about infrastructure and volume two was very much about war. It was about the battles. It was about putting down this civil unrest and then also dealing with the invasion. There was a lot of action. There was a lot of strategy and everything else and battlefield type stuff going on. This volume kind of like shifts the gear back a little bit. So it doesn't quite feel as intense as volume number two. But this one is very much about diplomacy now, where it isn't just about what happens inside the country, and it isn't just about battles, it's now about talking face-to-face -face with people that we know are more powerful than us. How to deal with people that have a balance of power, far more power than we have available to us. It's all about that diplomacy in this volume. And then, of course, it is then finishing with the interior diplomacy again, which kind of makes it feel like it goes a little bit full circle, even though I know volume four kind of is the finishing of this arc. It still makes it feel like it kind of comes full circle because volume number one dealt a lot with Soma dealing with nobles and corruption and stuff in the kingdom. And then this volume ends with Soma dealing with the corruption that has happened and that he had to put down. So, in a lot of ways, it makes this feel like it's a nice, like, sort of package. Uh, although, obviously, it leaves quite a number of questions up in the air for Volume 4 and future volumes to take care of. We still don't know by the end of this volume why it was that Soma was handed the keys to the kingdom so suddenly and so easily. We still really don't feel that there's a resolution to this whole conflict between Alfreden and Amadonia. There's, who is, what is going on with this whole demon lord empire? Like, there's all this kind of stuff that we're still finding out a bit more. I like this volume for the fact that it made it feel like the story was expanding. I mean, it wasn't just about the one country. Or even, you know, when we get into volume two where it's two countries. Now, we've got this empire, this massive empire. And also, because Amadonia borders other countries, we're getting little tidbits about the fact of who else is in this world and finding out a little bit more about what goes on in those other countries and stuff like that. And we start getting glimpses into just how big a strategy that Soma and Hakuya have had to try and come up with in order to advance the kingdom and in order to make the kingdom so that it can survive well into the future. So I really like this volume for its broadening of the series, for making the series much bigger and wider, exploring the world more. It was cool to have sort of a different kind of uh, political action theater going on in this one where it's much more about diplomacy and particularly diplomacy with a nation that is stronger than Soma could hope to be anytime soon. So very different kind of take and I will say that again like Soma as a character you still like him even though he does have to do some terrible things because you kind of understand what it is that he is doing and why he's doing it. I really do appreciate how the author continues to use things like real world history to explain Soma's actions, where Soma's like, I'm not just doing this because I'm evil or because I'm a jerk or because I don't like somebody. I'm doing it because if you look at the history of our world, time and time again, there are multiple instances where you can look and say, this is the result of this thinking, which is why I'm not going to go down that road. So, 
I really like that kind of history that's been packed in there. Uh, and you know, I know Machiavelli gets mentioned a lot in this series. Um, you know, and everybody has sort of opinions of Machiavelli if you've heard of him or read his work. We're actually going to talk a little bit about that, I think, on the podcast because Bio's got a bunch of stuff about Machiavelli and he's actually read The Prince, which is the book that is heavily referenced in this series. But I do like the fact that there's other history. It isn't just Machiavelli, particularly in this volume. There's also a lot of other history brought into it and world situations and stuff. I, I like that sense of how Soma is able to justify what he's doing, that it's not just, well, someone told me it was a good idea, or, oh, I just kind of thought it was a good idea. No, it's like, I'm basing this on history. I'm basing this on real world events that have happened that we can look at and say, well, here's an example, and this is why things went down the way they did. So again, the series has a lot of really good stuff in it. Uh, like I said, it has a lot of that real world stuff that backs up what's happening in the fantasy world. It has this character who is an approachable and kind of nice guy, but who is also able to steal himself and do what needs to be done even when it's horrible. Uh, and again, you know, I kind of feel like in this volume, the secondary characters take a bit of a backseat uh, because, of course, we have new secondary characters introduced from the Empire and everything else. Um, but again, you know, I, I really like the cast of this series. I, I like the fact that all of the women in Soma's life, I mean, it's very much a harem series, but still all of those women serve a very specific function. It isn't like they are just there for, I need the Sundari, I need the Dandari, I need this, I need that. Like, even though those personality traits may be there, they still, in terms of how this kingdom is being built and how Soma's plans are being created and everything else, they serve a function. They actually serve a purpose as being part of his group and that he relies on their abilities in all different ways. That I really liked about this book. And uh, I continue to like about this series. So all in all, volume number three of How a Realist Hero Rebuilt the Kingdom, still a really good series at this point. As I said, it's a lot of a cool down type volume compared to volume two where we have a lot more of just talking type diplomacy as opposed to the battles and action that we had in volume number two but there's still definitely lots of really cool political maneuvering which is what kind of sets this series apart and we continue to get all of those sort of real world history elements brought into it that makes the character's actions seem justifiable and understandable. So again, really good one. Um, and, and I'm going to be reading volume four, obviously, because uh, podcast, I'll be doing that one as well. So I'll be continuing with this one. Now for my next review, I went to Patreon and asked my patrons, hey, there's been a bunch of volume ones recently put out that I haven't read a single volume of. What series should I look at? And um, they came up with a three-way tie between Kokoro Connect and Archdemon's Dilemma, How to Love Your Elf Bride, and what was the other one? Oh, The Unwanted Undead Adventurer. And so I was kind of left in a bit of a quandary, so I went to my wife and I said, okay, well, let me describe three titles to you and, you know, three stories, and you tell me which one should I read. And so based on my patrons and my wife's input, my next read is going to be an Archdemon's Dilemma, How to Love Your Elf Bride. That's going to be my next review, and spoilers, my review after that will be Volume 4 of How a Realist Hero Rebuilt the Kingdom, because, well, I told you, i got to get a red for the Light Novel Podcast. So. so now you know what I'm reading, too, in advance. So if you're brand new to the channel and you love light novels or you just want to know more about them, you should subscribe. I do two to three reviews a week as well as countdowns of the popular titles in Japan, as well as news, and also the light novel podcast is posted on this channel as well. Thank you very much for joining me in this video. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Till then, bye bye for now.